Brand new from Waxon Oshang, or however you want to say their name, is the new KG935H, a tri-band HT radio from by 2 a Radios. They're the only ones selling this radio right now. This is the new Waxon form factor that's been around in two or three models prior to this one. And we're going to talk about it right now. This might be my new go-to favorite HT around the house. Let's go. Once again, special shout out to buy2aradios.com. They did send me this radio. I wanted to do a review of it because uh, Danny over there at buy 2 radios he knows how much I love the 220 band. And yes, this one does the 220 band. I got it, but my, my ICOM is, is protesting. So I'm going to turn, sorry, ICOM, but I'm, we're talking about walks on today. So this one does uh, two meters, 220 and 440, and it is easily unlockable so that you can maybe, maybe if you're so inclined, Use it on MERS and GMRS frequencies. Not that I condone that. Not that I really have any problem with it either. But, you know, to each his own, you do you. And I'm not going to tell you what to do. And that's just uh, how this goes. So let's check this out real quick. All right, pulling up the Buy Two Way Radio's website. It's $149 for this radio. It's advertised as tri-band, 2 meters, 1.25 meters, and 70 centimeters. 999 memory channels, which is good. A lot of the, most of the your new Waxon series have the um, 999 memory channels. It's getting to be more common. 8 watts, handheld, amateur, analog only, repeater capable, frequency bands. It says frequency bands right here of three different bands. But if we go over here, we can clearly see that there's some pre-programmed channels in here. Ch channel 70 there. So I'm going to go 001. 2 meter call frequency. 70 centimeter call frequency. 6 meter call frequency, and if we go channel mode right there, okay, it's calling 6 meter call frequency, but if you go into channel mode, so all walks on radios have four modes. They have uh, VFO mode, frequency mode, and they have three channel modes, and the channel mode, the first channel mode will tell you the channel number, the second channel mode tells you the frequency, and the third channel mode tells you whatever you name the channel. So this one is named 6 meter call right now, but you can clearly see that it's on 223.500. KC5 HWB testing. So it's not actually got 6 meters in it. So we're going to go into frequency mode, and I'm going to go to... Uh, it won't even go there. Okay. So for whatever reason, <laughs> they've got that channel named wrong. Okay, no big deal. No big deal. Not a big deal. It's, it says 6 meter call. It should say 1.25 meter call there. And then 2 meter zero 01, and that's channel uh, 146.400. I had said in a recent video about repeater frequencies that there are some commonly used repeater frequencies throughout the United States and probably all over the world, uh, depending on what band you're talking about. There are some commonly used frequencies that get used in different areas because the repeater in Dallas-Fort Worth is not going to generally reach to uh, the Austin or San Antonio area or uh, Texarkana or Oklahoma City or anywhere outside of, of Texas uh, for sure. So the repeater that I use most commonly is our the ULIS repeater, 442.900 megahertz with a CTCSS tone of 110.9. But another city somewhere outside of the radius of that repeater could use that exact same frequency. Now, generally speaking, CTCSS tones are, there's kind of like a common tone in the area for whatever area you're in, and there's most of the repeaters will be on that one tone, but there's nothing required on that. You can set your repeater on any CTCSS tone you want to. So the good thing about this radio is that it comes pre-programmed with several different repeaters, already programmed in. That's a 2-meter repeater there, 2-meter repeater there, channel, that repeater there. So we're going to scroll down here. I'm going to go to channel 0, and then I'm going to turn it left, and it's channel 74. So channel 70, so it's got 74 pre-programmed channels. You can see there, those are all 220 channels there, some 440 channels there, multiple channels there for the 440 band, okay? And of course, you can pr punch in the channel number there, and we've got 146.52, which is the 2 meter calling, 446.0, 70 centimeter calling, and 223.5, 1.25 meter calling for FM simplex. So we'll have to rename that channel, but that's not a big deal, okay? So the other thing we can do is we can switch back and forth between the top band. So the bottom band's currently on 70 centimeter call. The top band's currently on uh, the 1.25 meter call. We can hit TDR right here, and it will open up, and it'll 
monitor both bands at the same time. Now, the good thing about this radio is that it is full duplex. Full duplex radio. So you satellite guys are going to love the full duplex features of this. You can receive signals on both top and bottom band at the same time. That's what makes this button here handy. If you're monitoring two frequencies at the same time, you're like, oh, I want to hear what's going on there. Then we change the area to whichever area we want to hear like that and hit TDR and it turns that one off. So there you go right there. Now, I said earlier it would work. We're going to change that because there's a lot of static on that uh, repeater frequency right there. So I said earlier, well, let's go around the radio. I'm going to show you how to unlock it and we can get to other frequencies. So PTT here, these are programmable buttons here. That changes it to the FM broadcast stereo right there. You can turn that off. That turns on the flashlight. Wouldn't be a complete Chinese radio without a flashlight. This has a water-protected clip for a speaker mic. Standard Kenwood K connector underneath there. The awesome thing about this radio is that it has USB-C charging right there. Now, one thing I do not like, because this the form factor on this Waxon matches the uh, KG-8, um, UV-8H. At UV8 Hotel, which I always thought was a good radio. I, I really like the UV8 Hotel radio. And it also matches the KG935G. 935G being for GMRS, 935H being for ham radio, ham radio bands. So the GMRS version obviously is only 462 uh, megahertz GMRS frequencies. And this one is three different ham radio bands. So, but the one thing I didn't like about the new form factor radios from Waxon is they changed because these batteries used to be four prongs on the back and the chargers that come with the batteries with four prongs here. And they were all pretty much interchangeable. My UV9 D mate radio, my UV9 K, the UV9 Papa, several other ones were four prongs on the back of the battery with a four prong charger. They changed that form factor with the eight hotel the um, UV8 hotel radio, and I guess everything new since then has been like this. And I don't like the fact that these are not interchangeable with the previous version of Waxon, because I got a bunch of those previous version of Waxon uh, base chargers all over the house. I got some here in the ham shack, some in my office, and they're good chargers. But now the new form factor of the radio doesn't fit on that. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter anymore because this one has USB C charging. And if we take this USB C cable here, it has a charging light indicator right there. It turns red when it's charging. It'll turn green when it's fully charged. That's a good thing to have so that you know what you're charging and know where your battery is on that. So that is the KG935. Very heavy form factor. I believe it's IP67 rated. It comes with a fantastic user manual. 100 plus pages in there. Very easy to read. Very easy to understand. Good English on that manual right there. You're not going to have any problems with that at all. Goes through all the menus and whatnot. Uh, okay, here it is right here. IP66, dust and water protection. The KG935H is a waterproof to IP66 standards. It is dust resistant and rated to within powerful jets of water protected by the nozzle, by a nozzle, 12.5 millimeters, against enclosure from any direction for a limited period of time. Okay, so there you go. It is not submersible. Right there it says not submersible. Do not attempt to operate the radio if it's been submerged. Radio charger is not dust and waterproof. So, But the radio itself is IP66. Good to know. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to unlock this radio. And apparently this is the way to unlock a radio for many different radios from the walks online. But the first thing I'm going to tell you about today is the sponsor of today's video, which is Light Me. Light Me ear chargers. You can see I've got these ear chargers in right here right now. They're earphones. They're wireless Bluetooth earphones, okay? So while the earbuds are in this case, they are charging, and you can charge this case itself by itself without anything in it. It's got a battery inside the case. My, I have some inner ear earbuds that go inside of the ear, and I really like those. I've used them for about two or three years. I, I like to use them when I'm deer hunting because I'll either listen to music or a, or a podcast or something like that while sitting in the deer stand and be able to, to keep my eyes peeled as to where the area I'm watching. But I don't want that music to be playing out loud while I'm sitting in a deer stand trying to be quiet. So Bluetooth earbuds are perfect for that. The problem is that if I sit in that deer stand for four or five hours 
those earbuds start to hurt. When they, the ones that poke down your inner ear, they start to kind of hurt a little bit after a while. These sit on top of your ear. You don't have that problem with this. I got these at the end of deer season this year, so I haven't used them in the deer stand yet, but I've used them once or twice before the time of this recording, and they work great. Check the link in the description below. They do have a 10% discount coupon code for you guys watching this video. Thanks for the support from Light Me Earbuds. So we're going to test this real quick. I'm going to put it back into channel frequency mode and we're going to go to 462 5 say 550 okay i'm going to try to transmit you hear that beeping it's not allowing me to transmit so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the radio off and we're going to hold down the number two button while turning the radio on right there and it asks for a, a password which is 1445 and it says unlock on the screen right there. It's kind of, the screen's kind of bright. You may not, may not be able to see that, but it says unlock right there on the screen. Also, if we're out in bright sunlight, it's quite easy to see the screen. The camera's not doing it a lot of justice right there, but I can see this screen pretty well out here standing in the backyard with the sun directly behind me. It's going to reboot itself. And now we're back at 462550. And I'm transmitting right now. WRFK311 testing. So there I'm transmitting right now. So that completely opens up the radio for full open transmit on 2 meters and 440. I'm not sure how far it goes on the 220 band. I mean, there's nothing worth transmitting on outside of the 220 band. There's some commercial stuff down there. UPS bought some frequencies down there at one point in time that they never used. So there's nothing down there. But it will go to, uh, to the MERS frequency. 151, transmitting on 151 there too. So we can do that. It'll go to the MERS, the five MERS frequencies and the 22 GMRS frequencies. Of course, those are not programmed in here. It's got 74 frequencies already programmed to, into it for the three amateur radio bands, repeater offsets and simplex frequencies, which is nice to have. If you're a new ham radio operator and you don't know exactly what to program or where to go yet, this might be a great alternative, especially especially if you have a 1.25 or 220 megahertz repeater near you, which is one of my favorite bands. One of my favorite bands is the 220 band. And I think that the repeater near me is 224.060. Okay, so the, the repeater nearest me, the 220 repeater nearest me is 225.080. So we're going to go up there like that. It is on, that's in Louisville, Texas. It's on a PL tone of 110.9. So let's program that real quick and show you how show you guys how easy it is to program from the front panel on this thing set that up so that the light's not glaring off the screen. So we're going to go in here, transmit CTCSS, and go like that, and turn that beep off if I come across it, 110.9. Shift is a positive shift. No, it's a negative shift. Okay, on that repeater, it's a negative shift. It's usually going to be negative shift on 220. Offset is uh, 0016 megahertz. Okay, and now we can go out here and we can say, okay, that's not uh, it's not hitting that quite well, but I, something I did forget, this is my fault, okay? It comes with two antennas. I don't like this. I don't like radios when they come with two antennas. They should come with one antenna that covers all the bands. So this one is clearly marked right here. You can't see it. Well, there it is, kind of focused right there. 136 to 174 and 400 to 480 megahertz on that antenna. So that antenna will actually cover your MERS and GMRS frequencies as well. This antenna, while it's not marked, presumably is the 220 antenna. I looked on their website. It didn't really say that, but this antenna is presumably the 220 antenna. So try to see if we can. It is not hitting that repeater. KC5HWB testing. No, it's simply not hitting that repeater. Okay, that repeater could be down right now. I can usually hit that repeater from the ham shack. So I'm going to do some more testing on that. Um, let's see if there's also one in Arlington. I'm going to have to do some testing with 220 on this radio. I got to turn that beep off. That beep's annoying. Menu 31. Oh, thank you. Thank the Lord. Okay, <laughs> that's done. That's that's done. All right, so we can we can look at we can do some more testing on that later. But uh, if we wanted to do a 440 frequency, just to show you that it's actually working, let's do the 440 frequency. Transmit power is high. Eight watt radio. It's eight watts on two meters. That's still correct. Shift is going to be plus, and offset for 70 centimeters is going to be 5 megahertz. Right there, and, oh, well, let's put the other antenna back on, because, heaven forbid. 
All right, there we go right there. A little scratchy. A little scratchy. KC5HWB testing. I was setting up some testing in this ham shack earlier. I brought my ID52 out here. There's a lot of noise in this ham shack. The ID52 was picking up noise in the ham shack. So I got to maybe find, maybe I'll do a video about finding noise in the ham shack and eliminating. Check the link in the description below. Once again, thank you to Buy Two Way Radios for sending this out to me. I'm going to do some real world testing with it. I'm going to carry this radio around for a week or two, maybe do a follow up video on it. Really like the fact that it's USB-C charging. It is tri-band. It's got 220, which is one of my favorite bands. I'm going to get one of those Nagoya tri-band antennas from it and replace this dual switching out the antenna thing. I don't like that at all. But uh, other than that, this looks like a really good radio. I'm looking forward to trying it on different frequencies. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Let me know if you've seen this radio already in the comments below. Let me know if you have one already and what you think about it. YouTube thinks you want to watch this video next. So go there and check that out, 73.